what you guys do in the morning for like your morning ritual or your morning disciplines or whatever in order to keep me myself not only motivated but in shape because round is a shape but that's not the shape I want is to get on the treadmill for like 20 or 30 minutes. Round is a shape, is that what you said? Round is a shape, but it's not the shape I want. Oh. I, I thought you'd pick up on that, thank you. Because if you didn't, I was gonna come over and go, hey, stop doing what you're doing on the lap. No, I know you're doing something for me. So, I, in order to trick myself, in order to stay disciplined, I actually watched 20 or 30 minutes of an action film, or an adventure film. Because I think I'm watching a, a film, which is what I am. That's what my mind's doing. My body's actually working out. I realized by doing that, I've been able to maintain my heart a lot better and a lot more consistently. My energy's up there, and I feel better. So what's the point? So today I'm watching Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Whatever you think about the film, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, it's kind of immaterial. But you know what I find? I find that there's, while my mind is engaged in the film and my body's engaged in working out, something magical happens. I start absorbing the messages of what I'm hearing and able to use them. And so here's Harry against he who must not be named, his arch nemesis. And, he's, and, and Voldemort's trying to control his mind and he's doing everything he can to overcome it because it's his arch nemesis. There's a point here. And I saw him struggling and he was trying to actually infiltrate, Voldemort was trying to infiltrate Harry's mind and to, to turn him. And, and at some point he resists, and what he says was really profound. And here's what he said. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you because you don't have any friends and you've never known any happiness, and that's why you're evil, and that's why you're trying to destroy me. And here's the thought that comes into my head. And, and it's solidified by what Harry and Hermione and Ron say at the very end. He goes, I know there's going to be a war coming. I know there's going to be a war coming. But there's one thing that we have as an advantage over him. We know why we're doing it. We know what we're fighting for. So the question is, what are you fighting for? What do you, what's worth it to you to come back every single month? What's worth it to you? What's the purpose in your life? What is the purpose? Why would you need a client for life? Who cares? I'll just say it that way. Who cares? You want a client for life? So what? What does that matter? Is there something you're fighting for? Right? And the things that are holding you back, the things that are dark and ominous and, and, and I ah, just the defeatist attitude and the crap that we go through mentally What's holding you back for crying out loud? And do you feel sorry for the thing that's trying to control you? It's, it, it's, it's all in your own head anyway, right? What is it you say, Peter? That what you do in your nutrition business, 80% is nutrition, 20% is exercise, but it's 100% mindset. 100% mindset. So what's your 100% mindset? What is changing the way you fundamentally look at everything. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Client for life? Yeah. But why would they want to stay with you for life? So you know the drill. You've been here before. We're going to do it again. This is the outline for today. Speed networking, wins and biggest challenges, personality mastery, 530 grid, natural laws, Q&A, and what we're going to do next time. Okay? So, Ed, in the time left, with the people that are here in the room, let's do some speed networking. Cool, this is going to be easy. Oh, yes! Yes. Ed! Okay. Um, <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going to go around, tell them your name, what your ideal client is, and um, what you do. Make sure you, they understand what you do. Because I've like got health insurance before I knew Kevin was doing you health insurance. Health insurance now? I thought you were in real estate. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. So, so I have a question for you. Make it simple. Here we go. <laughs> Get this on film. Um, like we everyone knows everyone else except for Amy. 
And so isn't this a redundant exercise? It's not for Amy. Right, uh, but I think Amy would want all of us to benefit. <clears throat> isn't there a better way to do this? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm open for suggestions. Does anyone have any suggestions? Could we get around a table together and make it more intimate? More intimate? <laughs> I, I, I want to suggest that Mark has something to say. <laughs> He's got an well, idea that, that he's just Peter. percolating. Well, I, I, told, I told Teresa, I said, this will be the, the best one we've ever had because there's not new. I mean, Amy's kind of new, but we met, you know, so we've spent some time together. So we're not. We're good friends now. And so I'm not nearly as inhibited as I have been in the past because there's less individuals, and I know each one of them. So now I have more freedom to go ahead and share my mind. And so we don't do structure. I know Peter's like, oh, this is going to be good. I am so glad. I am so glad that I showed up today. So we don't ever do structure for structure's sake. There's always a benefit to it. So are you guys taking this and doing this throughout the rest of the month? I mean, are you guys asking people's biggest challenges? Are you getting, you know, what their ideal lead is? Are you doing those things? No. Okay, and why not? It's, it's not top of mind. And, and, and any, any idea? I, I, I should have kept my mouth shut. No. <laughs> any idea as yeah, to why? The truth. Any idea as to why it's maybe not? Life is the way. Haven't made it a habit yet. Okay, and why isn't it a habit? Because you haven't practiced it. Because you repeat consistently. So it's, it's a matter of starting that and repeating it. But why would we have a habit in the first place? Because we have a desire to get results. Because we've done something 15 days in a row. Once you do something 15 days in a row, it makes a habit. Good or bad? So Peter was paying attention to what Kevin was saying. I mean, he, he's not just getting up here to just get up here to talk. I mean, he obviously put some thought into that. And he obviously put a lot of energy into that. And so I think what's missing is I think you guys are missing... Like it's it's the passion, it's the purpose, it's it's why we're. Did you have something? I was gonna say that. I was like, the vision's there, maybe not there, but neither is the passion. That guy had passion this morning. Yeah, you know, when I was young and I first got in real estate, I remember the first month I was in real estate. Economy was down, and nobody was selling real estate. I was working 60 hours a week at Western Electric, and I became the company's salesman of the of the month. And it's because. I went to work, they told everybody everything I knew about real estate. $2,000 down, $500 a month, bought a border hill house. That's everything I knew about real estate. And I sold five houses the first month, and that's all I knew. And it was just because I was passionate, and I was excited, and you know, even though I was working 60 hours a week, didn't have time to do it, I still sold five houses the first month. And it looks like, you know, when you look around the room, I mean, it looks like we're all really young and just kind of getting into what we're doing. I, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, is, do we have that youth and the passion and the energy and the excitement to really make it come alive again? I mean, I was on a, on a legacy partner's call this morning, and a guy, a CPA, owns his own accounting firm, and he's like, very successful practice, successful marriage, successful family, success, everything, but he had lost... He had lost it. He had forgotten why he got into what he was doing in the first place because of the day-to-day -day things. And, it, and so a few months back, we did a kind of a, a reboot, and we looked at people's, you know, what's your passion? What's your life vision? Why are you put on this planet? And that's the fastest way to change a habit, is to recognize... I, I, my, I am predestined 
I was put on this planet to accomplish this goal, and if I don't change my behavior immediately, I am not going to fulfill my life vision. And for some reason, that's not, it's not getting through yet. And that really ticks me off. <laughs> like a lot. I'm like, all right, uh, something needs to... And so the speed networking going around, we know by and large everybody else is like, what does it take to expand this beyond this group? What's it take for you guys to get it? Fortunately, I have seven children, so I have tons of experience at this stuff. It's like, you're teenagers, you're 15 years old, can you get it? So, what's the typical reply? They don't. Yeah, I, I think I do. <laughs> Get what? <laughs> Get what? Yeah. No, they, 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 they know what they're supposed to get. Cool. They know what they're supposed to get. So, what we're gonna do is, you know, somebody's gonna go ahead and 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 take Amy and just spin her head. Just gonna go deep on her. Just gonna go ahead and make her go. I have never, ever ever experienced that before in my life. I mean, in three minutes, in seven minutes, nine minutes, in nine minutes, I, I mean, I've never had a nine-minute experience like that before. Who would like to do that? I'll do it. Okay. So, Amy, what is your single greatest challenge, personally or professionally, right now? Transitioning from being a sales trainer for a corporation to being a sales trainer on my own time, having my own business full time. So, if you want to do that, why do you want to do that? Freedom. Freedom from? Freedom to? Freedom from working for someone else. Why? So what? What's wrong with that? Because I can make a bigger difference globally if I'm independent. Which means what? Which means I wouldn't have the restraints that I do in corporate America. So freedom from corporate America right. to have a global reach doing, but, but why? Why do you need a global reach? It's my mission. What is your mission? Change the world to serve others, to help and to let people realize their full potential, what they're capable of. Okay. So, what does an ideal lead look like, and how are you going to get that done? An ideal look, lead to me looks like anyone that is interested in being better than they already are, specifically in the sales profession, someone that's looking to increase those types of results. So, how do you know that when you found that person who's open and ready or willing? There's somebody that is open to new ideas, innovation, and sales technology, and someone that also is not 100% satisfied with where they are with their results. So their income, would, their... So if everyone business. in this room could ask one question mm -hmm. of one person, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 9, 10, 11, 12 of us, would ask one question to one other person this week that could help you find your ideal lead, what would that question be? Do you know anyone that is selling a product that is looking to take their performance to a new level? Okay, does it have to be someone in sales? No, oh. I should say someone that, do you know anyone that is in sales or an independent entrepreneur that is looking to take? Does it have to be sales? No. Then ask it again. Do you know anyone that is an entrepreneur that is looking to take their results to a new does level? Does it have to be an entrepreneur? Do you know anyone? <laughs> Stick up the entrepreneur. Okay. Do you know anyone? Now say it again. Do you know anyone that is looking to take their results to a new level? Did anybody get that? Yeah, and you know what? As you kept saying it, and huh? as you kept being more specific as to what it really was, did you notice what happened? Tell me what happened. She got more energy. Thank you. More passionate. Right. So, say it again. 
Do you know anyone that is looking to take their results to a whole new level? So I can walk up to anyone and say, do you know anyone who wants to take their results to a new level? Yes. Who would that be? A lot of people. Okay, but a lot is like what? So what, what does that look like to you? Um, who do you, do you know someone specifically today? Name, a name, <clears throat> phone number? Because if I could connect them with somebody who could help them do that and help them solve that, would it be worth it to give me the name and number? Right. Okay? Does that help? Yes, it helps very much. Okay, so now my next question is what object... Just one minute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Tell me what you like in order. A square, triangle, wavy line, or a circle? Triangle. That's number one. What's number two? Square. Number three? Circle. Number four? Squiggly line. Okay. So what would cause you the most pain in your life? Something being out of order? Yes. Out of control? Boring or not fun? Or conflict with people? You know, I think that actually the out of control would be the first thing that would bother me. And then the second would be the square. The third would be the squiggly line, and then the fourth would be the circle. No, there you go, three and then four. Okay, so <clears throat> can anyone tell me Amy's personality in order? It's analytical. Drive, uh, driver? Driver. Analytical. <clears throat> okay, so the ones okay. that have the circle. All right. So, well, how is that? Oh, you Thank did you. good. Mm -hmm. Mark Jr. Okay. <laughs> but we all have something concrete we can walk away with. Okay, yeah. so Amy, if you could walk away <clears throat> with something today that would absolutely just totally blow your mind, what would that be? Clarity that there is a market out there that I can tap into and that there are individuals that I can connect with to help me get to that market. And you're not clear on that? I'm clear on it now as I'm saying it. Okay. So now you've accomplished that already. Right. What, what, what else would you like to accomplish? What else would I like to accomplish? I would also mm -hmm. like to support everyone else that's here today and understand how I could support them and getting to the markets that they need to get to. So how would I need to show up, or what, what do I need to understand from everyone here so that I could support them? Because part of my mission, too, is to serve others. So I'm not here to just get, you know, to get what I can get out of being here, but I also want to be able to serve others in this partnership. I want to know how I can serve others here. So one to ten, how coachable do you think you are? I mean, you've asked me this before, but I'll, I'll say... Probably a seven. Okay. You know, if somebody said that, you know, Amy, I think you're coaching a lot of two, how would you respond? I would ask them what would make them think that way. I'd like to understand what's, what's the barriers from keeping me from being coachable so that I could address those and change them if I need to. Okay. And one to ten, how, how, how intense would you like me to be with you today? One to ten. Ten. Ooh, no, no, no. <laughs> All right. Thank That's you. That's not the right response. I'll say, I'll say. You could, you could, I'm sorry. I'll have to intervene here. Five Anything minutes. above a six and, and, and the room as we know it could evaporate yeah. and it could go into another dimension that we don't know what we've seen our loved ones. So, the yeah, reality could advice. collapse. I'll take it to a, a five now that I've That's thought through that response safer. further. Safer. You right. might want to do three or four. Okay. <laughs> So, so how, how important is it for you to accomplish what you want to accomplish? It's extremely important to make a five. No, it's a ten. It's to accomplish what I want to accomplish is a ten. So how do you know that uh, the intensity doesn't have to be a ten? I think I'm making an assumption it has to be a ten, but it's also, I think it can be as effective at a different level. You think? I think so, yeah. Oh, I don't think so. Why is that? It's, it's like natural laws. It's like, uh, it's like you know, um, metal, like to go ahead and purify it, it takes a certain amount of heat. Well, let's just do half the heat. It's not going to work. 
you know, for water to evaporate. Well, you know what? It doesn't take as much. I don't, I don't, I don't know why. It's just people have got to be willing to go through a lot of pain to grow. Right. I don't know why it is. It just is what it is. And so I think that's what it's going to take. Okay. So what would you do? <laughs> what a setup. I like a 10. It's okay. crazy. I'm, I'm nuts and I'm crazy, but I'm also someone that when I, um, and maybe it's because of my background and what I've done up to this point, but I just, when I, when I do something, when I commit something, it's 100%. I don't like to just dip my toe in the water. I like to go full out. Because that's what I teach and train other people to do, is not to play 50%, because that's not where the results come in. So, are you familiar with the next dimension principle? No. So, if I were to say, you know, what's a higher number, two or nine, most people would say, well, nine is, but it's because they think in one dimension. Right. And so, a one to a ten, if there's ten levels of proficiency, once we get to a ten, we move to a new dimension. So, a one in the next dimensions, or a two in the next dimensions, higher than a nine in the previous dimension. Mm -hmm. And so, in your world that you play in, your coachability is at a seven. But in another world, I mean, it doesn't even get into the Richter scale. What you see and what you understand in, in one dimension, you know, it, there's a new world out there that you haven't been exposed to. Right. And, and that's why you have fears. And so, to break through those fears, my experience is you just, it's just painful, ugly, it's just messy, it's just hard. It's just hard, hard work. And it's beyond anything that you've ever experienced ever in your life before. Right. And that's why you have the fear. Because you, you want the freedom, but you understand there's a price at a subconscious level. You understand there's a price, there's a cost for that freedom. Right, letting go of security. So what we try to do is we try to go ahead and navigate through that and try to minimize that. And there's nothing necessarily inherently wrong with that. It just won't work. Right. And so, does anybody have any questions? Yeah. When we were talking about um, you being a 10 for her, one thing I was wondering about, I was going to ask you, is that uh, if, but given the different dimensions, a 10 from your perspective on how you approach her depends on the dimension you're approaching her on, right? Right. So my two might be somebody else's, you know, 20. Yeah. And so when I was, I talked to Michael Cogdill, who won like 24 Emmys um, in, I think it's South Carolina is where he's at, he's on TV, and so I had two conversations, I was introduced to him uh, through uh, David Hancock, who's the president of uh, Morgan James Publishing out of New York. And so I, I was talking to Michael, and we had two conversations. And on the second conversation, he said, um, Mark, you're an executive coach. Uh, what do you see that's wrong with me? <laughs> and I said, you know, my one to 10, how, how direct, how intense would you like me to be? He said, oh, give me a 10. I said, just heads up. Normally, my two feels like about a 20, and so I'm just afraid that I'm going to hurt you. He started laughing. He's like, Mark, Mark, Mark. <laughs> He's like, you know, on TV, they're brutal. You couldn't tell me something I haven't heard before. I'm like, really? Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> so I always like, I tend to do it more than women. The testosterone kicks in and the arrogance kicks in and they think they're really studly people. They think they're really, you know, really powerful. It's like, ah, that's interesting. I said, so Michael, has anybody ever told you lack confidence? He's like, there's silence on the phone. He's like, no, nobody's ever told me that before. Then I paused. He said, you think I lack confidence? I said, well, we've just had two conversations. I don't know, but here are five things specifically that relate to comp a lack of confidence. So the ability to see things that other people can't see, the ability to understand things that other people can't understand, <laughs> um, the ability to do things that other people can't do, that's the magic to being able to own your own company. What I just recognized 
this last week, I'm, I'm investing a lot of time, a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of resources into the EVA program, the Executive Virtual System Program for Life Masteries. Part of it is because I just love doing it and part of it's selfish, you know, selfless selfishness. It's like that's how I'm going to get my business to run without me. And so what I recognized is there's different dimensions. If you're unemployed, you need this amount of discipline. Discipline people, discipline fingers, discipline in taking action. If, you go, if you're a good employee, you need this. If you're a great employee, you need this. If you go ahead and own a franchise, you need this amount, uh, this amount. So you need a lot more. Um, if you're gonna go ahead and start your own company, you're gonna need like this, and if you're gonna if you're going to need, you know, if you're going to go ahead and be an innovative company, you need this. And if you're going to be an innovative company, that will run without it. So, so, you know, owning my own company for 24 years, I've got that down, okay, pretty much. But getting it to run without me, I'm going to need minimum of 10 times, maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand times the discipline, people thinker, and discipline in taking action. And so, does anybody know uh, a mistake that Amy made that'll put her out of business? She lacked confidence <clears throat> on something she had said in that last segment that was unclear. So it's unclear for you to articulate it, and it's going to be unclear for me to understand. So is lacking confidence, is that a good thing or bad? Bad. Bad. Not necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. I want my kids to lack confidence in driving so they're more careful because when we're confident and yes. think we can do things right. that we can't do, we get into ourselves into a lot of trouble. So I would say that Amy's lack of confidence is one of her greatest strengths. Why? Because, it's because she people. should lack confidence. Because she doesn't know it yet. She doesn't know what she needs to do yet. Right. I don't know what I don't know. Right. There's a reason cool. for, there's a reason. The thing is, she made a critical mistake that probably five of you should have seen, but probably, I, I, I wouldn't doubt that none of you saw it. I have a question. Do you think that's a true statement for everyone? You lack of a confidence on what you strengths because our business is not at the level you fully satisfied yet. So I think this statement should be true for everyone. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah, totally. Does anybody know the mistake that Amy made? Amy, do you know the mistake? It'll put you out of business. You make that kind of mistake one time, you're out of business. In a big corporation, there's so much infrastructure. Yeah. You, can, you can screw up by and large so much that you don't want, they got the infrastructure built to support the screwing up because everybody does it all the, all the time. But in your own company, you make one mistake one time and it can end, it's done. So I, would I think say it's, I mean, I, I think one of the thoughts I have is, is not being 100% crystal clear about what my question is, what I'm looking for, who can help me. I don't want to cut into the other agenda, so okay. i got to wrap this up really quick. Um, so we'll probably get swing back around in the bonus session. So there's something that Amy, you know, yeah. She's not very clear who, she, who her target is. She said anyone. That's very vague. That would, that would be one of Yeah, things. Kevin was kind of driving to that, yeah, which expands the group, which is pretty intelligent. But he, he, So there's a whole bunch of theory on that, on where do you go and what do you do, and so yes and no. Um, but it's not even in this session. I mean, it's not even, it's, she didn't make the mistake here in owning our own companies, getting our business to run without us. Um, I mean, it's a whole different level. I mean, I'm playing in a field that I'm like, oh my gracious, okay, so I can't do that, I can't, I, you made one little tiny mistake and all of a sudden you don't get your business running out without you, or worst case, <laughs> even worse, is you get your business running without you and then all of a sudden somebody else makes a mistake and kills your whole business. That's not good either. So we'll swing back around, we'll swing back around, I don't want to take us too much off okay. track. Um, the bonus session, the bonus session, um, Amy is going to be sharing today. You'll want to go ahead and stay around for that. Um, we're also going to be talking. How many of you are familiar with the um, ice bucket challenge? Okay. 
Um, they, they raised over $15 million thus far. I mean, it's going viral. We have the ability to do that as a group. We could raise $15 million, $15 million for our veterans or any cause that we wanted to do. It would double, triple our business. But we don't, we lack the vision to, to see it, that we even have the capability. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh, I know exactly what we're going to do, what I'm going to do. So we lack the vision to be able to do it. And then, even if you have the vision, what do you have to have in addition to the vision? The plan, the execution. You have to have the knowledge base to be able to pull it off. Then what else do you need to have? Discipline. You need to have the discipline. And this group, great group, love the group, amazing group, you guys are spectacular, you really are, but this group lacks discipline in another dimension. I mean, it's another dimension. And, and I, 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 I'm confident I can take you there if you want to be taken there, but I'll tell you, it may be one of the most painful things you've ever experienced in your life. I mean, so when you go ahead and write down, my biggest challenge is, you all should have this down. I came here today with the biggest challenge I want to solve. My question to you is, do you really want to solve it? Jesus asked the cripple man at the pool of Bethesda, walks up to a cripple man, cripple his whole life, Jesus says, do you want to be healed? I don't know about you, but that seems like a stupid question to me. But it's not. See, you and I don't want our biggest challenge solved. We really don't. Because as soon as we get our biggest challenge solved, we know subconsciously we're going to a new dimension. And any time we've ever had our, I mean, going back, my wife and I just celebrated our 30th anniversary uh, last weekend. It was amazing. Congratulations, Thank you. guys. Thank you. And so... You know, I remember, I remember being an 18, 19 year old young man saying, I want to get married really bad. <laughs> I mean, I remember that. And then I got married. <coughs> it is awesome, but there are some challenges. Challenges. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> that come along with being married. And then, you know, we both say, you know, we love kids so much, so we start having. Children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are some challenges with having children. <laughs> and it's like, and so this is all playing on your on our psyche where it's our subconscious, and we're like, ah, my life is getting harder. I don't know if I want to go any to any higher dimensions. And then there, you know, there's diapers and they're exhausting. And then what do you want them to do? You want them to become a toddler and when they're a toddler, I drove back um, two weekends ago <coughs> with my oldest daughter and her two sons. And her two-year-old son, that guy, he's a walking disaster. I mean, you can't take your eyes off of him for a second because he's gone. So diapers kind of look good when you got a toddler. And then you say, boy, I'd really like them to be able to brush their own teeth and clean up after themselves. And then they become teenagers and you're like, Man, toddler's not so bad. <laughs> and then they become adult children. You think, okay, that's really cool. And then Bruce shaking his head, I'm shaking my head. Yeah, maybe not so bad. That's not. And so subconsciously, we don't want to fix our own problems. We really don't. Because we know we got another one coming. Because we got a bigger one coming, and we're like, you know what? I'm just going to settle. I'm just going to settle for where I'm at because it's a lot easier. I'm not going to take the risk. The only thing I think that drives us beyond that is either some disaster catastrophe in our life or our life vision why we were put on this planet. Because what we, why we were put on this planet drives us beyond that. If we don't understand that, we don't drive it. We just simply don't. All right. Thank you. Wow, I feel like part of me just got an abrasion or something, and that's really good because I think that's it's a good wake-up call. Because it's true, it's true. I mean, if we solve that once one thing, so we got something else coming. Out.